you're considering a heat recovery ventilation system for your house and there's two options, right? There's the centralized and there's the decentralized. And so today I wanted to tell you a little bit about the decentralized system, some of the pros and cons and where you should and where you shouldn't use it um, so that you can make an informed decision whether it's the right thing for you. A centralized system is, is typically great for a new build, but right now we're talking about the decentralized and you can use them for new builds too, but often they're used for renovations or if people have an existing house and they just want some fresh air. And this is why the um, HRV systems uh, are great. I personally really like them, I've got one in my house because it provides fresh air while not, say, cooling down or heating up the room. If, if, if inside you've got it at a good temperature, 22, 24 degrees, something like that, depending if it's winter or summer, you can still get fresh air into the house um, without the dust and without the noise of having the window open, without losing energy. And so that's the main idea behind it, is you basically have this fresh air and you can get rid of stale air, um, you can get rid of moisture that you don't want in your house, which might be causing mold or, or some other problems like that. Um, and you can do it automatically without having to lift a finger. So the decentralized is an option. Uh, personally, I think the if you have the option, the centralized system is better but you know if you're doing a renovation it might not be an option or even if you're doing a new build it might not be an option and you need to have these and these units are installed in pairs so while one is blowing um, or putting fresh air into the room or the building another one on let's say the other side of the room is extracting air and they change their operation. So let's say on average every 40 seconds, they switch from uh, extraction, you know, to uh, supplying fresh air and then they exhaust it again. And that way you get the good air exchange and it can uh, do the heat recovery part. So the heat recovery part actually works uh, by, they have a ceramic disc inside and the ceramic is uh, really good, uh, has good thermal properties. It conducts energy quite quickly and it can store quite a bit of energy. So let's say it's in that uh, extraction mode and inside it's 22 degrees. What's happening is it's extracting air from the inside of the room. It's passing it past that, that ceramic um, heat exchanger and it's blowing it out. And so it's coming in at 20, 22 from the room and then uh, it's heating up that ceramic disc to let's say 21 or close to 22 degrees uh, and outside um, let's say 18 degree air is being exhausted by the time it gets outside. Then after 40 seconds it will switch, the direction of the fan will switch, it will start um, sucking air into the room and what happens is let's say outside the air is at 15 degrees, it will warm that up to let's say you know as it passes past that ceramic heat exchanger it will warm up the air to let's say 20 or 21 degrees. And that means that, sure, there is a, you are losing a tiny bit of energy there, but it's better, it's much more energy efficient than having the window open where just your room would be flooded with, um, let's say, cold air, and you would have to have the heating on, and then you're playing that game of, well, how long do I leave the windows or the doors open without you know, cooling down the house too much and being un uncomfortable? The way that the um, HRV systems work is that they work all the time, 24 hours a day ideally, but at a low rate. So it's not like an air conditioning system where it's um, you know, really blowing air into your room and you can feel it move around. These work, whether it's a centralized or decentralized, they just um, blow a little bit of air in, but constantly. So over time, you get that air exchange that's required to make sure the air is fresh, doesn't have, say, the carbon dioxide content and the moisture um, that you're trying to get rid of out of the house. So here's a representation of how it's installed. This is the outside face of it, or the outside of the wall, and this is the inside. And in Europe, they have thicker walls, right? So it comes, the standard unit comes uh, with a maximum depth of about 300 millimeters. Now you can cut that down to whatever depth you need, which uh, generally in Australia is, is a little bit less, and that 300 is suitable for 95% of, uh, of people's homes. But if you did need one with, uh, uh, for a thicker wall, then there is another option for that. Now, 
they're not always the best looking, to be honest. So this is the external uh, cowl. So this lets either sucks in the air or exhausts the air out, and it's made obviously to prevent um, rain and you know the elements getting inside. So that's the outside, and then if we turn it around again, we've got the inside, and the inside is just this sort of quite bland <laughs> square, which is open on the sides and lets the, the air in and out. And you can shut that if you wanted to shut it off for whatever reason, and then you, uh, which seals it to, to the outside, and obviously you would turn the unit off with the controller. Oh, the controller is just stuck here on the bottom. I'll lean that over a little bit. So this is the controller that comes with the system. Uh, and it's just quite a basic controller. But the idea is that it's set and forget. If you need to change it, you can. Let's say you're having a party and you know the ventilation system's working on the lowest speed. You can crank it up to you know, exchange more air. Now, a couple of mistakes that people make when they install these is A, they don't allow for the cabling. So each one of these needs a cable that goes back to a central controller. Uh, it only needs to be a two core cable. Um, it's low voltage DC, so it's not a big headache, but make sure you have that in place. And then the unit also has to be slightly tilted to, towards the external sort of uh, external louver. And the reason for that is if any condensation forms or is collected inside the unit, if it's sloped outwards, the condensation is, basic, is going to naturally drain out. Now, the last thing with these units is the noise, and this is uh, a really important thing to talk about. Now, when you look at the sound data, it doesn't really mean that much, right? Sure, there's some number there, but in reality, what does that mean? And these aren't completely silent. It doesn't matter really what brand you get, but they all make noise. They have to because they're this small compact units and there's a fan in there which is trying to um, uh, you know, f push air through filters because the air is also filtered. And so it has to have some, you know, a bit of power behind it to be able to push the air through the filter. And especially if your filter hasn't been changed for a while, then it's harder and harder for the fan to do that. The point is it generates some noise. And during the day when you're, you know, you've got background noise around, you know, there might be some cars outside or someone's mowing the lawn or whatever, even your other appliances are working. You know, you don't really notice it. So it's fine to have in your living room or other sort of areas like that, but I personally wouldn't recommend this having in your bedroom. Even though that's a space, that's, a, that's somewhere where you really want the fresh air, uh, even though you want it all throughout the house, you know, I, I like the fresh air in my bedroom, but this you would have to turn off, in my experience and my opinion, at night because it makes, in the dead of night, it makes noise. So during the day, you won't think anything of it. But as soon as, you know, it's the still night, it's going to keep you up. Some people that are really heavy sleepers, sure, you might be okay with that. But I think that the majority of people would struggle with the noise. So we tend to recommend keeping these in those uh, areas such as the kitchen, bathrooms, um, living rooms, studies, other places where people aren't sleeping. And lastly, uh, don't forget to change the filters every so often. Um, there's actually a countdown timer on most units and they uh, basically will start indicating when it's time for a filter change. Now to access the filter on this unit, there's just four screws that uh, you, with your hand you undo here and you take this face cover off. And then, I might do it just to show you. And then the filters are accessible inside behind it. Okay, so thanks to the uh, magic of modern video editing, I've now removed the, the four screws holding this in. And so we can take the, the face cover off and we can see here, we've got, this is the inside cartridge. And there's actually two filters here. So one is on this side, I won't take it out, but is this filter here, which is the, um, the more 
the better filter, we'll call it that, it filters out more. And then on the other side, we've got a, a more of a coarse filter, which is uh, just basically catching the big dust and stuff from, from outside. But then this one, this white one does most of the hard work, which catches the finer particles. So you can do this maintenance yourself by, if you just have say one or two minutes per unit, you unscrew those, uh, those screws, take the filters out and you can purchase new filters online quite easily. Um, you don't need anyone special to do it. Um, apart from that, there's no other maintenance on these units and they probably, look, it depends on the amount of runtime and how much dust and stuff is, is collected. But, you know, a rule of thumb is, let's say once every six months, if you replace the filters, you have really good quality air. So the units are low cost to run. They, they have the, the fans in there, which we talked about before, but they only consume, you know, in the order of watts. Well, you know, we're not talking hundreds of watts, we're not even talking tens of watts, but we're talking watts. Uh, so it's pretty cheap to run, so that's why you can let it run just 24-7, 365 days a year. And you can uh, install a lot of it yourself. Uh, when the unit comes, it comes with a transformer. So you need to obviously plug it in, or have it powered somewhere, so it needs to take 240 mains voltage, and that goes to the transformer. And then from the transformer, uh, it goes to the controller, and then from the controller is the low voltage wiring to uh, each unit. As I mentioned before, the units work in pairs. You can have an odd number of units. It will still work and sometimes that's the way you have to go because you just don't have enough wall space or, or positions where you can um, put an even number of units and you really need or you want to have the maximum amount of fresh air. So you can put an odd number of units in, but if you can, in reality, do put an even number in um, and that way it'll work the best. So to summarize, decentralized HRV systems are fantastic for getting rid of moisture, pollutants, smells, other things in your house, getting rid of that stale air from your house and, and introducing fresh air without losing a lot of energy and they do that automatically. Now, to be honest, if you can, get the centralized HRV system, they're a bit quieter uh, and uh, basically it's a, it's a better system. But if you can't get one of those for, you know, you don't have the space or perhaps you don't have the budget, this is the next best thing. And I do still recommend these, but just not in your bedroom. So we've talked about how they work and the pros and cons. And below you'll find a link which will take you to a site where there are some decentralized HRV systems for sale. So please do have a look at those. And if you do choose uh, to buy one of those, rest assured that they will work for you in the long run without fault.